Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative, and today I'm going to show you how to create a coming soon page in Squarespace. Let me preface this video by saying that there's actually two ways to create a coming soon page slash under construction page, and the method I'm showing you today only works in Squarespace 7.0. The method we're using today uses a thing called cover pages, and these are only available in Squarespace 7.0. There's another way to create coming soon pages that works in both 7.0 and 7.1. So I'll create another video on that too. And I already have a post about that, which I'll link below. It's a little bit different, so check it out. But if you are using Squarespace 7.1, make sure you look at that one because this video or post isn't gonna be very helpful for you. So if you're using 7.0, then let's dive in. Okay, so I have open here a Squarespace 7.0 site. It's just a demo site. It looks a little bit crazy, but the instructions should apply no matter what 7.0 site you're using. Let's create an under construction page or a coming soon page. And we can do this by scrolling down to our not linked section, clicking plus, and we're going to add a cover page. So this is the sort of page that we're gonna use for the under construction slash coming soon page. And this sort of page isn't available in the new Squarespace 7.1. That's why this tutorial is only for Squarespace 7.0. Click on cover page. And you can change the title to whatever you want. I'm gonna do coming soon. And when you open up your cover page, you'll see that it basically creates this page that has no header, no footer, just a simple button and some simple text and also a logo. So it is very simple and this is why it's so good for a coming soon page because it kind of creates this blanket over your site. This is what people will land on. The first thing we wanna do, if you wanna set the coming soon or under construction page live straight away, what you wanna do is actually create this coming soon page as your homepage. Click on the cog here scroll down and set as homepage. What that's gonna do is it's going to make this page your homepage. So when people head to your site, they're going to land on this page and they can't really get anywhere else just because it's a very simple page. There's no navigation, there's no footer. And this means that you can just work on your regular site behind the coming soon page. Now I will note that this is just a page it's not actually hiding your entire site and there's cons and pros to this. The cons would be that if you really don't want people to see any of the pages on your site, they can still access them if you have this page, if they know how to get to them or if the pages are indexed on Google or something. So for example, when they come to your homepage, let's say your, you know, your URL is testsite.squarespace.com, even though that's not a very good one, but let's just say that is your home and people head there and they're gonna land on this page and that's absolutely fine. But for example, if you have a specific blog post that you've linked to, or if you've linked them specifically to your about page, they can still access it because everything on your site is still live and it's just this page that's the home page. If you have um, links showing up on Google, like your different blog posts or podcasts or whatever, then people will still be able to click into those and they'll be able to access them still. That's sort of a potential pro also. So it's a pro and a con depending on what you want. This coming soon page isn't gonna shut down your whole site. It's just gonna add basically a message to the homepage and if people come to the homepage, they won't be able to go any further. But at the same time, people can still access your other pages if they have the links directly to them. Yeah, like I said, it depends on what your strategy is for your business. If you have a site with lots of blog posts and really good search engine ranking and stuff, you might want to keep those pages live. In this case, this coming soon page would probably be quite a good option because you can tell people that land on your main site or your main homepage that this is, you know, the, the site is under construction or, you know, it's coming soon. But if there's people finding you through Google, finding you directly through your blog posts, 
then they will still be able to access them. And this is really good if you want to keep people still accessing your content on the back end. If you don't want people to access anything, there is another way to add a under construction page that actually shuts down your whole site. So it's different than this. And I'm going to put that in a different tutorial. That is the same one that I recommend using for Squarespace 7.1, since you don't have this cover page option in Squarespace 7.1. But it's quite cool with 7.0 that you do have the two options because some people might want every page on their site to be closed down. And some people might want to leave some pages open to the public, like their blog posts and other pages like that. So this is the option if you do want to leave some pages open still. I would recommend using this option and leaving those content pages open if you do really rely on search engines as your big traffic driver to your website. Because if you use the method where you shut every page down, then Google isn't going to be able to see your content anymore either. So if Google can't see your content, it's not going to bring your content to the masses. It's not going to show it on the search and it's going to start dropping your search engine rank. But if you leave them open, then it will continue to index them as usual. There might be a few small differences because obviously your homepage has changed, but overall the content on your site is still there and it's still visible to Google. That is the main difference between those two options. If you want to check out the other option, I will create another video for that. I also have a written post on it already, so I'll link that below this video. And if you want to continue with this option, we're pretty much almost done. So I'll show you how to do that. We've set it as our homepage already, which is the big thing. And now we can just edit the page to be our own. So click on the coming soon page and it will open with some different settings. So the cover page has these settings, which is quite cool. You can change the layout first of all by clicking change layout and you can choose from a variety of different layouts in this list just whatever works with your brand and your business. Each of them you can add like a button to, or I think you can even add two buttons to each of them. But you'll have that option for all of them. So really, you're just looking at the layout that you prefer the most. So you can go in and choose whichever layout you like. I'm going to just stick with this one for now because I think it's good and click back. Then under the branding and text tab, you can add your logo up here or you can just add it as text. For me, I'd type in Big Cat Creative and I could just leave it like that. We can change the font. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Or you can actually upload a logo. And then the headline, which is coming soon, which I'll just leave it as that. But obviously you can update that to whatever you want. And then the body text is this text underneath. I'd usually say something like oh, on our website right now. Please come back soon to check it out. It's good to have some good details on there about when you're planning on launching. If it's under construction, when you're planning on opening it back up, because then people know when to come back. I also recommend in this text adding any links if you want to. Obviously we can add a button and I'm going to show you a little bit more about that soon. But if you do want people specifically to follow you on Instagram or specifically to send you an email or something, you could just add some text like please email us for any inquiries, Ooh, not inquiries. And what you can do is you can actually you can actually link your text by highlighting it and clicking the little link icon. And then you could hook up your email address or any link you want. Click on this cog to open up link settings. Here you can add a, an external web address. You could link to a page around your site. If you wanted to direct people to still read the blog and tell them that it's still open, you could say something like the site is down, but you can still read our posts by clicking here and then you could link out to your blog page. If you wanted to add your email like I had, you can actually enter your email address in here with the pre-written subject and any body text you want to add. You could add your phone number if you wanted them to call you or you could even upload a file so when they click on that link it will automatically download a file directly to their computer. There's lots of options by using this link tool here if you do want to add 
anything else that you can't just include in a regular button. So I'm going to save that and go back. And under media, this is where you can change whichever image has come with the layout that you chose. It's a little bit confusing because there's no image in here, but the media for this is this image with the kiwi fruit. If you change it to none, it will just change to a color. So you can change the color of that. I'll show you how to do that soon. You can upload a video by, well, you can't upload a video directly, but you can add a video via YouTube, pasting it in there. And you can also add like some filters, the playback speed and a image for mobile. Or you can just go ahead and change the image. So it's going to revert back to this image that it came with. And we can either upload our own image or we can search through the Unsplash library that comes with Squarespace. Under free images, you have your own personal library here so you can upload your own images and you can upload any free images here too. I'm just going to upload this one of me. and click back. To change the colors and fonts, and I think to make everything look good together, I would go straight to style because the images and the style sort of all work together. So I usually do the media and style and sort of go back and forth between the two of those to make sure everything looks good. And there's just tons of styles in here to choose from. So you can update the positioning. You can update the imagery and the settings for the styles will be a little bit different depending on which layout you chose in the first place. So you might have some in here that I don't have, but this is where you can change simple things like the fonts, the font colors. This is where you can change the background color or you can give the page a border. And you can also update that overlay color that goes over your image underneath gallery overlay color. So I'm just going to uncheck the auto overlay color and then give it a different overlay color by just playing around with these color tools. That's really just colors, fonts, and the image style. So I usually like to do that after I add the image to make sure everything is looking pretty good and click save when you're done. Then click back and we'll move on to the action in the social links. Click on action. And this is to do with what's happening down here. So your button, So you have the choice between buttons and navigation. With the buttons, you can add two buttons. I don't know why they give you the choice of two buttons, but they do. <laughs> so you can see when I type in for the button there, it shows up here. You have the option to add up to two buttons if you want to do that, or you can head over and click on navigation. And this is a good option if there are some areas around your site that you still want to link to, like I talked about before, if you want to link to the blog, you could say like, read the blog and link it out to the blog page. And maybe you could say, call us about us or something like that. And you can really just link to whatever you want and you have five options here to link. So again, I'll just go over how to link. So click on the little cog and then you can choose from web address, page, email, phone, or file. Those um, actions are pretty straightforward. If you wanted to add a form, so if you want to add a contact form, you actually can. So you could say contact us here. This is going to display as a button like this. And if you want to edit the form, just click edit and you can actually edit the form. So this is like a preview of what it's going to look like. I would change the name so you can see where the contact has come from. Something like coming soon form. And you can edit all of the fields. Each field has its own settings. So you can click edit on each field and you can add a ton of different fields by clicking add form field. So that's pretty cool. Then make sure you choose your storage. Make sure that's hooked up with an email address. So it goes straight to your email or otherwise a Google drive, your MailChimp or Zapier. 
And you can edit some advanced settings too, like a disclaimer or a post submit message. Uh, but generally I leave all this stuff as it is. Once you've finished editing your form, just click save. And it won't let you save it until you've added in some storage. So I'll just add that and click save. When you click on that form, I'm not sure if it'll show you, but yeah, when you click on that form, it actually opens up the form in a new window and then people can submit their contact form. That is a really cool feature too. If you wanted to use a newsletter sign up form instead of a regular contact form, you can switch it over to the newsletter sign up. You'd say something like sign up for our email list and you can edit it the same way as you edited the form by clicking edit and you just choose the connection because all it is is just a newsletter sign up form. So I'll show you it in action in a second. But to use the Squarespace newsletter form, you do need to either connect to Squarespace email campaigns, Google Drive or MailChimp. There's actually no other options, which makes it quite limiting. If you're not sure about using the Squarespace newsletter form and you'd rather use your own form, I recommend using a regular form and hooking it up to your email list via Zapier. So if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, don't worry too much, but if you really do want to connect your email newsletter form to this and you're not sure how, I will link a post under this video all about how to connect your specific email marketing software within Squarespace, which should help you. There's lots of options for action. Click save once you're finished adding in your actions. And then lastly, we will go to social links. So this is just a very simple option of adding some social links. If you want to add some social links to this page, all you need to do is type in your handle, which would be depending on the social media. For example, Instagram for us is instagram.com slash big cat creative. And Facebook is the same. So facebook.com slash big cat creative, and then just hit enter once you've typed it in and it will automatically save it and it will automatically pull the appropriate icon. And if you want to change the positionings of these icons, you can actually go back into the style and you should be able to change the color and change a few settings about them. You can do that there under the styles. So that is your coming soon page all done. Just to remember that this version only works for 7.0 and it doesn't shut down your whole site. All it does is put up a cover page where your homepage should be. So people will still be able to access back end pages if they do have the direct links to those pages or if they find them on Google or something like that. So if you did want to do an option where you actually shut down your whole site, check out the link below this video. I will link away to a step-by-step -step post on how to do that. It's a pretty similar, but a slightly different setup. And it also works for Squarespace 7.1. Cool. If you have any questions, let me know below and thanks for watching.